Do you want to explore ancient fortresses, centuries-old cathedrals, and historic landmarks that shaped a nation? Would you love to immerse yourself in the vibrant culture and energy of one of the Philippines' most beloved cities? Welcome back to Travelog Trails. Today, I'll be taking about the very best of Cebu. From breathtaking natural attractions to fascinating historic sites and lively city adventures, I'll give you an insider's look at this amazing island paradise. Let's find out! Our first stop is the Cebu Metropolitan Cathedral, located along Mabini Street in downtown Cebu City. As we approach the front of the cathedral, the first thing you'll notice is its imposing stone facade and bell tower. Built in the late 18th century, the cathedral exhibits a unique Baroque design unseen in many other Philippine churches. Instead of the ornate Spanish Renaissance style common in earlier periods, the exterior features rounded edges and rhythmically alternating concave and convex surfaces. Intricate floral carvings embellish the stone facades. Their curving forms and natural shapes characteristic of the Baroque aesthetic. This ornate decoration continues inside, where every surface brims with lavish accents. Stepping inside, we craned our necks to admire the beautifully painted ceiling frescoes high above the nave. Scenes from the Bible and images of saints intermingle with complex geometric designs that create an illusion of three-dimensionality. At the front of the cathedral, the enormous gilded retablo gleams under the lights. A multitude of carved wooden saints stand frozen in dramatic poses within its many niches. To the left, the grand pipe organ commands attention with its towering structure and seemingly endless rows of metal pipes. But the most striking feature is the trompe l'oeil mural behind the altar. This painting tricks the eye into perceiving expanded space, making the apse appear far deeper than its true physical dimensions. The realistic shadows and architectural details are masterfully brought to life by the talented unknown artist. Everywhere we look, gold accents, elaborate painting, carved figures, and textured stonework blend together in a vivid symphony of Baroque artistry. The cathedral's lavish adornment reflects the immense wealth that flowed through Cebu during its 18th century heyday as a Spanish colony. Being the ecclesiastical seat of the Archdiocese of Tibu, the cathedral has played a pivotal role in the growth of Christianity across the central and southern Philippine islands. It was here in 1595 that the baptism of Raja Humabon, along with his wife and 800 followers, marked the establishment of the first Christian community in the Philippines. Next door to the cathedral stands the Archdiocesan Museum, displaying ecclesiastical artifacts like centuries-old religious paintings, statues, and liturgical objects. It's a quick but worthwhile visit to glimpse into the Catholic faith's extensive roots in Cebu. After exploring the cathedral complex, we make our way to Fort San Pedro, located just a short drive away along the city's waterfront district. As we approach the entrance, the fort's triangular structure comes into view, spanning an entire city block. This is the oldest Spanish fort in the Philippines, first built in 1565 under the command of Spanish conquistador Miguel López de Legazpi. It served as the first Spanish settlement in the Philippines and was the center of political and military power in the region for over two centuries. Entering through a stone archway, we find ourselves in a spacious inner courtyard. The fort's walls stretch up to 20 feet high and enclose various structures like the Bastion Towers, garrison building, and a small chapel. Walking along the ramparts, you can imagine Spanish soldiers standing guard, protecting the fort from raids by rival powers like the Portuguese, Dutch, and Moro pirates. One of the fort's most notable features is its triangular design, which allowed for crossfire against invaders from three sides. This strategic layout, along with its thick stone walls stretching up to 22 feet wide, helped the fort withstand repeated sieges. Most notably, it survived a fierce battle against the Portuguese in 1568, which destroyed much of the city outside the fort walls. The fort also served as a notorious prison, where locals and rebels were kept in inhumane conditions. Stepping into the damp, poorly lit garrison prison will make you grateful not to have been imprisoned here back in the day. After a sobering walk through the fort's dark history, we emerge back out into the sunshine and make our way just a short distance to Magellan's Cross. Housed in a small stone chapel, this iconic cross stands as a monument to the Philippines' deep connection to Spain. According to historical accounts, Portuguese explorer Ferdinand Magellan ordered this wooden cross to be planted upon arriving on Cebu Island in 1521. Here, he held the first Catholic Mass and baptized Raja Humabon, his wife, and several others, forming the Philippines' first Christian community. 
an encasement of stone and metal was later added to protect the original cross from devotees who chipped away splinters as religious relics. But you can still glimpse the cross through glass windows in the chapel's side rooms. Standing before Magellan's cross, it's inspiring to reflect on this critical milestone in Filipino history. The acceptance of Christianity on this very spot would forever shape the culture, faith, and identity of generations to come. After a morning steeped in history, it's time to experience some of Cebu's best hotels and casinos. Hailing a cab, we make our way to the plush Radisson Blue Hotel overlooking the city. Stepping into the lobby, the upscale modern atmosphere immediately catches your eye, with sleek furnishings and chandeliers hanging from a tall atrium ceiling. The friendly staff greet us as we head to the front desk to check in. Our deluxe room is the perfect blend of comfort and style with floor-to-ceiling windows, plush beds, and a spa-like bathroom with a deep soaking tub. After settling in, we make our way up to the 22nd floor outdoor pool and bar, where we're treated to panoramic views of Cebu City. What a way to spend the afternoon. Later in the evening, we decide to try our luck at the waterfront casino, conveniently connected to the Radisson. The energetic atmosphere immediately envelops you with the bright lights, upbeat music, and chatter of gamblers placing bets at the tables and slots. We try our hand at a few slot machines, blackjack, and roulette. The friendly dealers explain the games thoroughly and keep the energy lighthearted even when we turn out to not be the luckiest gamblers. After a few cocktails at the casino's lively bar, it's time to call it a night. As we reflect back on the day, the Radisson Blues' luxury accommodations and Waterfront's thrilling casino made the perfect counterpart to our history-filled morning in Cebu City. On our second day, we check out of the Radisson and make our way to the Waterfront Cebu City Hotel for a new experience. This iconic, tallest building in Cebu has welcomed visitors since the late 1980s. Walking into the expansive lobby, we're blown away by the grand, elegant interior with marble floors, chandeliers, and sweeping staircases. It almost feels like stepping back in time. Stepping into our room at the waterfront Cebu City Hotel, we're immediately drawn to the floor-to-ceiling windows, revealing stunning panoramic views of the harbor and skyline. Tiny ferries dot the shimmering waters, with the towering peaks of Macton Island rising in the distance. The hotel's prime location offers easy access to Cebu's top attractions. We explore historic sites like Magellan's Cross and Fort San Pedro, which are just a short stroll from the hotel entrance. The surrounding streets host lively restaurants, cafes, and markets. As the sun sets, we decide to try our luck at the waterfront's thrilling on-site casino. As we enter, the energetic sounds of lively chatter, upbeat music, and jingling slot machines fill the air. We order cocktails at the neon-lit bar and try our hands at poker, roulette, blackjack, and more. Though Lady Luck doesn't fully shine on us, we enjoy the electric atmosphere. This iconic hotel has welcomed guests since its opening in 1988 as Cebu's tallest building. Over 30 years later, it still delivers luxurious accommodations, first-class amenities, and world-class entertainment. Its prime location, posh interiors, and lively gaming facilities make the waterfront Cebu City Hotel a staple of any visit to the Queen City of the South. After an unforgettable stay, it's easy to see why this landmark hotel remains a top choice. With warm Filipino hospitality and all the comforts of home, the waterfront makes the perfect base to explore the very best of Cebu. Let me know below if you're already planning your Philippine adventure. Remember to like, subscribe to Travelog Trails, and stay tuned for the next adventure.